Hey guys, it's Kay, I hope you're all well. Now in today's video, I want to address a question that I've been asked by one of my viewers. And the question is, can you use the NVIDIA Shield TV as an NAS drive? And the short answer to that is, of course you can. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now there may be some of you out there who might be thinking, what's a NAS drive? Well, if you've got a lot of files like photos, music or movies, chances are they're sitting on a hard drive somewhere. Getting access to those files can be challenging without an expensive network attached storage solution. So yeah, it's basically a hard drive which is attached to your network, which can be accessed at any time. And like I mentioned, they can be quite expensive to buy, starting off at a couple of hundred for a decent one. And they normally don't come with hard disks installed, so you have to factor in the cost of the hard disk. So you can easily end up spending a couple of hundred pounds on hard disks. So you can see why I've turned to the DIY solution. Now, there's a couple of things you want to consider before using your NVIDIA Shield as a NAS. Firstly, it's probably best to use a NVIDIA Shield TV Pro as your NAS, as opposed to the cylindrical NVIDIA Shield TV. Now the main reason for this is that the TV Pro has got USB ports, so you can attach your external hard drives. And the TV Pro has also got more RAM, which helps with video processing. The second thing you want to consider is using a wired network connection to your router. This will give you a faster and more stable connection for streaming video. And of course the third thing you want to consider is hard drives. Now I recommend using SSDs as you're going to get a faster file transfer speed. Now the last thing you want to do is set your NVIDIA Shield to stay awake, so you can access your files whenever you want. Now I've left links in the description below on what equipment I recommend for this project. To connect my SSD to my NVIDIA Shield, I'm using this cable from Sabrent. It's basically a SSD to USB 3 adapter, and I've used it in previous projects, and it provides adequate speed. And this is the SSD I'll be using. The SSD and cable just plug in like this, and the other end of the cable plugs into your NVIDIA Shield. But there's a few things we need to do first before we do this. Now the main thing you need to do is connect your hard drive to your PC or Mac and using a disk utility, format it to XFAT. Now if you miss this step out, you're going to get the following error message when you connect your SSD to your NVIDIA Shield. So once you've done that, you can safely connect your SSD to your NVIDIA Shield. Now I have to confess in this part of the video, I'm using a different hard drive. It's a Seagate 5TB mechanical drive, but as you'll see later in the video, it works perfectly well. Now once you plug in the hard drive, you'll get the following notification. But even if you don't get this message, you can go into your settings and scroll down to device preferences and then scroll down to storage. Now once you get into here, you'll be able to see your attached storage. And in my case, it's a 5TB Seagate drive. And you can see I've got full access to that 5TB. So if we back out there, now to make this drive available over the network, we need to scroll down and click on transfer files over local network and then select turn on. Now this will automatically assign you a username and password and it will give you your IP address. Now you need to take note of this information as you will be using it to connect to your network drive from your PC or tablet later on. Now if you click on username, you can change it and in fact I'll change it now. So I'm going to call it techfig and then press on next. Now in the same way, you can also change the password but I'm going to leave it as it is. Now do remember to take a note of all this information. Now the whole purpose of a media server is having your media available when you need it. So the next thing we need to do is set up the NVIDIA Shield so that it doesn't sleep. And to do that we need to enable the developer's menu. So go into your settings and scroll down to device preferences. Click on about and then scroll all the way down to build number. Now once you get to build number you need to click on it up to five times to get into the developer's menu. And you can see it's counting down here. And that's it, we should see the developer's menu on the main menu. So if we go back to the main menu and scroll down to the bottom, you should see the developer's menu there. Click on it and then scroll down to stay awake and toggle it on. Okay guys, so we are done for all the settings on the NVIDIA Shield. We now need to go back to our PC or Mac and make a connection to our new NAS drive and try playing some media files over the network. Okay, so back on my computer, I'm going to open up the file explorer and what we need to do is make a network connection to the NVIDIA Shield, which is now available as our NAS drive. So I'm going to click on create new network connection and it's here we need to refer back to our notes for our IP address. So it's 192.168.0.72 and click on connect. Now this will bring up another window and you'll be prompted to enter your username and password. So my username is techfig and my password is that long thing there. Now you can opt to remember the password so you don't need to enter it every time you log in but I'm going to leave it as it is and just click on connect. From here we just click on OneTouch which is my 5TB drive 
Okay, so we're into the contents of my 5 terabyte hard disk. Now I'm going to open up another file explorer and I'm going to copy across some more video media. Now currently I'm just running off Wi-Fi, so let's see how long it takes. I've got a 4K media file here which is nearly 700 megabytes. Now so I don't keep you guys waiting, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, so over Wi-Fi that took approximately 1 minute. That's not bad for a 700 megabyte file. Now of course this would be a lot faster over a wired connection, but I forgot to attach the network cable. So let's see if the Wi-Fi connection is fast enough to play the 4K file. All looks pretty smooth and stutter free so far. Let's see what happens if I jump forward. And jump forward again. And again. So, as you can see guys, there's no issues here, even over Wi-Fi. And I can minimise the window, move it around, and there's still no issues here. Now, I did also try playing multiple streams from the Wi-Fi connected NAS NVIDIA Shield, but I ran into video stuttering and choppiness. So, this time I'm going to try it with a wired connection. So, I'm going to select the first one and minimise it, get it ready to play. And select the other video and get that also ready to play. And that just happens to be an old YouTube video of mine. Okay, so here goes, sit back and watch. I'll let the first one start up. And then start the other one up. Hey guys, it's Kay. Now recently I purchased an Android TV because my Hyphens TV just packed up. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad it did because I've been enjoying the Android ecosystem ever since. Now a few apps like YouTube and Netflix got pre-installed but for the rest, it's up to you. So for the best experience, you need a mix of music, video, productivity and system apps. So with that in mind, here's a list of my... Okay, so you can see in File Explorer the network address of the NAS drive. And if I try to eject the NAS drive, it'll say can't do that, it's playing the file. So guys, should you go ahead and set your NVIDIA Shield TV Pro up as a NAS drive? Well, in my opinion, yes. Why not? Just like a commercial NAS drive, your NVIDIA Shield TV Pro has got two USB 3 ports, so it's easy to hook up an external hard disk and share your files over your network. Now it might not have any of the fancy features of a NAS drive, like one touch backup, but it's got a gigabit ethernet port, so if you wire it up into your network, it's going to give you seamless playback. And if you're like me, and you've got all your data currently scattered across a selection of external drives, it's an easy way to consolidate all your files into one place. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, please a like, and maybe even a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.